Hey guys, Sean here. Today, Luke and I are back with another tier list. Today we'll be ranking the best budget decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! So let's get into it. We have a few tiers here. Of behind the Couch Money, Broke But Woke, Cost of a Happy Meal, and The Cost of Losing. So before we begin, let's just preface this with the fact that this is based on the cost of the deck and uh, how good the deck is. So the top tier is going to be filled with decks that are cheap but pretty good. You can probably win a regional with it. The bottom tier is going to be decks that are expensive and you still lose. So let's get right into it. We have a really good deck to begin with. Dinos! And the only reason I put them not in top tier is because if you want to play this budget, you cannot buy uh, Ground Zeno. Ground Zeno, like three copies is almost 100 euro. I think it's about 60. But it's like, it's a good card for the deck. But you can play uh, Dinosaurs without Ground Zeno. Just use a scrap engine and you're like pretty much fine. Everything was either printed in the structure deck or in uh, Wild Survivors. So the deck is very budget. If you just take out Ground Zeno, you're working with a very strong dinosaur deck. Even cards like Pot Prosperity have been reprinted, so they're not even too expensive. So I think it definitely goes in this tier. Yeah, especially for the price, the fact that it can play both sort of playing styles in the sense that it can be control, but also can be a really combo heavy deck that's able to break boards and OTK your opponent. I definitely think it deserves to be high up there. Only missing out on top spot because of Ground Zeno, but what can you do? At least it's just like one card that's really, really expensive. The rest are all relatively inexpensive. And there even was a list, uh, recently enough, that did not run Ground Zeno, but got like top cut at a big YCS. So it's pretty good. Next up, we have Sword Soul. Now, I'm hesitant to put it in top tier because it is cheap and it's a very good deck. However, this hasn't really topped recently enough. Like, it's a good deck, but it just doesn't get the tops. I don't know if it's just because people don't play it anymore. But you know, it, it is missing out on something. Uh, I think as a budget deck, it is more complete than Dinosaurs. I, I'd say it's probably better, but um, I don't think it's top tier. Yeah, Sword Soul is definitely like one of the most fair decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, to be honest with you. A lot of decks can be relatively imbalanced when it comes to power level. Sword Soul is very, very fair. Uh, one thing I will say about it is that a lot of people kind of know how to play against it now at this stage. Although it can be hard to kind of like interrupt uh, its combos, people do know the general play style so they're able to kind of combat it and like be prepared for it. So th that's kind of like the one thing I can say uh, that's down about it. However, it's still a very strong deck. The main card you need three copies of is usually about uh, 8 euro each, which is relatively fine for a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Most people uh, have like staples in there that are probably about 30 euro or whatever. But uh, no, Sword Soul is pretty good. They have like a bunch of their stuff's been reprinted and it's a relatively good deck. It's very fair, definitely very powerful. Next up we have Black Wings. Black Wings can be built for the cost of a Happy Meal. <laughs> That's not true, but they can be built fairly cheap. Uh, you're only going to go so far though if you're not going to be buying like some really good staples. But as a deck, it's not bad. Like Black Wings have seen success at like big tournaments before. And uh, the new support is actually very good. And it's very cheap. I think the most expensive card you're looking for is uh, some of the new synchros. But that's about it. So definitely a really good like synchro spam deck. Really good combo deck. Uh, it has like some burn mechanics which are really cool because to help you win in time, it's always an important factor for winning tournaments. I think they're a pretty good deck, but you know, they don't really break into the next tier. Yeah, only unfortunate thing I could say about the Blackwing deck now is that uh, you can't really use any of your old Blackwing cards like your Gale, your uh, Bora or whatever. They pretty much all use like the new uh, Blackwing cards that came out in Darkwing Blast. So you do need to basically buy an entire new deck. The only thing the card that really did survive was probably Black Whirlwind, but that's rightfully so. Black Whirlwind's one hell of a card. So yeah, it will you will be buying pretty much all of the new cards in order to actually build it. However, it is definitely a lot cheaper than most other decks that are out right now. Next up, we have Shadows. Now, Brandon Shadows did get like top cut at one uh, event recently. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool deck. I think you, you can play pure Shadows. It's very cheap and pretty decent. Brandon Shadows as well. You don't need to really buy the, the crazy expensive branded cards. You can just run a small branded engine to help your Shadows engine. And you're looking at a pretty good deck. I don't think it's as good as Black Wings, just because, you know, if you're playing on a budget, you're really limiting yourself on what you can really get. Uh, I still think it can win. Like, it's definitely not a bad deck. Shadows have always been relevant. They've always been such a good engine. With Branded as well, it just makes it like, it actually makes it like a really kind of strong deck. So yeah, if you want to build this deck, you can pretty much just buy the Shadow Structure decks and the Branded Structure decks, and then you just pretty much have the deck. 
and you might need to buy a few extra cards but that's like the foundation of it so you can definitely find success with just like those few resources right there also wind is a card which can win games on its own yeah if you're playing shadows now you definitely be playing with the branded engine or at least the dogmatica engine dogmatica has got like very cheap uh, recently thanks to the rarity collection reprints uh, thank god for that because dogmatica price were getting a bit out of hand with ecclesia and stuff like that but yeah, I definitely think if you're playing a Shadal deck, it definitely needs to be the branded version or the Dogmatica version. I'm more leaning towards the branded version, to be honest with you. But still, a very, very good deck. Next up, we have the first top tier, uh, Marinces. Marinces are extremely cheap and they're very good. They have topped multiple events in the past few months. Their cards go for pennies. There's like one expensive card, Marinces Dive. And you only really need one copy uh, at a minimum, most people run two, but it's just like, it's such a good deck for the price you're paying. And because basically all the cards are one card starters, you fill the deck with a bunch of hand traps. And most of the hand traps in the game now are really cheap thanks to the rarity collection. The extra deck is really cheap too, because you don't really run like really good staples like Axis Code or Zeus. You run very specific Marincess cards or other like cyber good stuff. So yeah, one of the best budget decks in the game right now. Honestly, I think it is probably the best budget deck in the game. There are some ones that come close, but I think this is like definitely a very safe bet. Next up we have Labyrinths. Now, if you're gonna be playing this deck budget, you're really gonna be like skipping out on a lot of cards. So obviously no transaction rollback for you. Not even Arius because that's about like a tenner per copy. At a bare minimum, you have to run three Big Welcome Labyrinth and that's setting you back like 50 euro. So it's difficult to call this a budget deck because it's so much worse than what it could be if you put in some money. And even the extra deck, like obviously the extra deck isn't too important, but if you really want to like min-max the deck, you really need good extra deck stuff. And it's just a bit tough. It's possible you'll find some success with it, but um, you're better off either like maxing out on Labyrinth or playing a different budget deck, in my opinion. Next up we have Sky Strikers, let's go. <laughs> Sky Strikers are based. The only bad thing about Sky Strikers is the fact that it really needs a bunch of expensive staples in order for it to get by. I know hand traps got reprinted a lot, so the likes of Ash Blossom and Draw are actually kind of like budget uh, options now. However, to play Sky Strikers efficiently, you kind of be wanting some uh, spell staples such as Triple Tactics Trust and Triple Tactics Talents or in order to get it like really efficient. Sky Strikers is still a very powerful deck, it's pretty much an easy one for one type deck. It can be really really cheap, I know a lot of the stuff got reprinted in Mavens which is really really good, but although that was a, a while ago, I will say the only expensive Sky Striker card left now is Linkage which usually, uh, usually costs about 7 euro per copy, but that is a trio that you need to run at. I don't think Sky Strikers will be uh, necessarily really good on a budget build, but if you're getting this open power you are of course getting it open price as well. So. These guys are kind of fall into kind of a mid-tier category in the sense that they will be really, really good budget, but to play it more efficiently, you won't be spending your money. I'll say if you're going to build this budget, go for a blind second deck. That's probably your best way to play it because it's cheap enough and it can definitely steal some wins off your opponent. Next up, we have Rikus and Avalon. Um, it's budget enough. Like, you can definitely play it budget if you don't include cards like SP. It's a bit on the pricey side. Some of the cards are a bit expensive, but... San Avalon's engine is pretty cheap now because of the newest ban list. Most of the Rika stuff is reprinted. Some of it is still a bit expensive, but most of it's fine. Uh, all the new Aroma cards are dirt cheap. The most expensive card in the deck now is your Jasmine, which you need two or three. You can get buy on two. Three is probably the best. And that's going to cost you about, about 15 euro per copy. It's kind of cutting it, calling it a budget deck, but I do think uh, it's not like a bad option. If you put in like a little bit extra money, you have like a decent deck on your hands. Jasmine and Snowdrop might be the only kind of pricey cards, but uh, still, it's it's very playable. You can definitely play this budget, but in order to play it optimally, you'd be spending money. So it kind of needs to fall in the category where it's still a great deck, but just because of the cost of the good stuff, it kind of ends up low on this tier list. Next up, we have Dark World. I do think Dark World is pretty good because if you buy three structure decks and a few extra cards, you're looking at a pretty good deck. Now obviously they got the new support in Duelist Nexus. It's called Dark Corridor. Uh, search it as any one of your Dark Lord cards and you discard a card. So it's like fantastic, but it's not like 100% necessary, right? It just adds consistency to like a deck that already like discards and draws a bunch of cards. So you can definitely play the deck without it. Most of the like extra stuff you need from the structure decks 
are very cheap. So it's definitely like a pretty good option. Even with the new cars like Gen and Ken, those are like a really good engine that's very cheap that you can put into this deck to really like mess up your opponent. There's a lot of really cool like tricks like Dark Worlds can do. I do think it's like a genuinely very good deck, especially for the price. Yeah, now just kind of looking at the list, I think uh, maybe Sword Souls should go below uh, Dark World as well, just because if you're talking about Dinosaurs and Dark World, you can get a lot of the stuff in the same sort of set, whereas Sword Souls is a bit more spread out. So just postage costs and stuff like that, if you're ordering these cards online, could be a bit expensive. But Dark World is great. Pretty much one of these uh, structure decks like Dinos or the Crimson King, where pretty much everything you need is in those decks. I think Dark World definitely has a lot of meta contention because it even has stuff outside the Dark World engine in the actual structure deck, such so as your Danger engine has been reprinted in the structure deck and also got reprinted a bit later as well. So yeah, Dark World, just one of these decks that are really, really good. And honestly, it doesn't even take advantage of a lot of staples. It'd be rare to see uh, Dark Worlds running like hand traps. So Dark World is definitely very, very powerful. It doesn't rely on a lot of uh, expensive gimmicks. So definitely deserves a spot really high in this list. Next up, we have Adignister. It's like worse Marincess and a bit more expensive. So, you know, it's not like terrible. It's better than Code Talkers, I'd say, especially for the price. Um, it's kind of like a one trick type of deck. You make your big Arrival Cybers Adagnister, you have like 15 one card starters that let you do this, and you have a big Towers. And if your opponent uh, can't beat you, you access Code Talkers the next turn. If they can't beat you, then uh, you lose. If they have a Kaiju or a way to out your Arrival Adagnister, you just kind of lose the duel. It's not a bad deck, definitely not. It's very consistent. Ends on a really good towers. It's kind of like bad pearly in a way. So I think it's like not too bad. It's like a little bit pricey, but you can get away with like running this fairly cheap. If you don't run stuff like Access Code, you can just rely on your arrival cyber static Nister. And you're you're looking at like some success. Next up we have Madolche. They're okay. <laughs> they're like decent. You know, they're budget enough. I think Salon is the most expensive card. But you do want to run this with another engine, so you either want to run some Kashtira stuff, which you're not going to be doing if you're paying budget, or some Vernus Sylphs, which are a little bit pricey, but they're not definitely not too bad. They can run Shifter and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. But you know, they're like, they're okay. They're, they're nothing insane. Yeah, all the cards are pretty old now at this point, so it can be kind of difficult enough to get your hands on them. It's not like they were reprinted in a set or two ago. They're like quite old at this stage. So just getting them all together, especially from the one seller, might be a bit of a pain. It's a decent deck, but I don't know if it's going to stack up well in terms of uh, today's meta. Uh, so that's why it kind of deserves to be on the low end. Uh, it's low end because although it is very, very cheap, it's just not very, very strong. So that's why it earns its place next to Shadal's. One more thing is that the Ashizu stuff got hit very hard. Uh, you're still left with the two shufflers, like one each, which is good enough. But it definitely takes a hit. If you had more Ashizu stuff, you'd be in a little bit of a better position. Next up, we have Heroes. Heroes about here, I'd say. Because they're budget, like, you can build a deck for under 100 euro. And I know, you know, that doesn't sound budget, but, you know, just take out all the really strong kind of, like, hand traps and stuff. And then you have, like, the core for about maybe 50 euro, I'd say. I, I put it next to Sword Soul, to be honest with you. Just the fact that heroes can pretty much do whatever the hell they want. And they have really, really powerful monsters as well. I think Dark Law is one hell of a card and also it's been reprinted a lot now so it's very very cheap even the likes of absolute zero and sunrise and even liquid soldier has been reprinted now any way you play heroes is a pretty pretty strong build next up we have everyone's favorite deck stun stun has always been a pretty cheap deck and i mean that in more ways than one uh, it's not going to cost you too much it can take wins now if you're playing stun and you really want to win you do have to like really play well because a good player is going to kick your ass if you're just playing stun and you're not really like thinking about what you're doing. If you just add floodgates and stuff, a good player will beat you. So you really have to play stun well, but it is hella cheap and it's definitely like a strong deck if it has the right pilot. So I think it's about up here, maybe a little bit lower, but I think this is like fine. Next up, Abyss Actors. They're like, they're okay, they're cheap and they're a good like blind second OTK deck. That's about it. I, I think they're probably about here. Yeah, they kind of rely on the one playstyle. With Abyss Actors, you pretty much need to be playing blind second. But just depending on like how crazy combo decks and how out of hand are getting right now, I don't really think uh, a blind second uh, build is the way to go. Especially with Abyss Actors, they can be kind of bricky. Uh, they pretty much have like only the one starter if you want to play them efficiently, which would be Curtain Razor. And there's really, really not a whole lot that we can say about this deck. It has done well recently enough 
the cards are really, really cheap, but in terms of strength, it kind of makes it lose a few points. So it's definitely deserves to be dropped down below Black Wings where it is now. Dino Morphia. We got a lot of reprints in the tins. They're okay. Uh, I'd say maybe about here. Yeah, Dino Morphia is pretty cool. I do like their gimmick of like having their own life points to get out some crazy guys with some crazy effects. I, I don't really know. I think Dino Morphia definitely holds its ground. It's definitely a lot more budget than it used to be. I think it's really, really cool. Virtual World. Oh, this is top tier. This is <laughs> this is top tier. All right, it's hundred yeah. percent. It can do a lot of really cool stuff. So you know, the core very cheap, nothing like crazy in the deck, and it can just run a lot of like really cool surprises. So if you're willing to spend like what the the fifteen euro on Crimson Dragon, you can have a Calamity Lock, uh, pretty consistently, or you can go down the funny route where you go into Beatrice and then you go with your Window Lock by dumping cards like Shit All Beast and uh, Trailman's Havnus. So there's a lot of like really cool things this deck can do. It's kind of like a XZ and Synchro like toolbox, which is really, really cool. Uh, and it also, you know, Shen Shen is just one hell of a card, especially this format, banishing like certain cards is really gonna cripple your opponent's deck. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Also, people have seen success with like the new armored cards, the armored XYZ cards. So those are really complementary to the deck. So yeah, I think it's like pretty good. What I really like about Virtual World is the fact it's able to take advantage of a bunch of different cards that you might necessarily expect. Even the new uh, Evolzar Lars Virtual World is able to play with ease. I, I really like it. I think it's going to be probably one of the one of these decks that kind of never really goes away. Next up, we have Exosister. They're not bad. They can run Shifter. Any deck that can run Shifter is pretty damn good. And basically all their cards got reprinted in the tin. So all you're looking for is the uh, Exosister rank 8, which is going to cost you a little bit because it wasn't reprinted. But one or two copies of that, and you have the deck ready to go. So they're a very good deck. Like, anything that can run Shifter, it also banishes a bunch of things. So banishing is a great, like, source of removal. They do, like, lack kind of, you know, grind game. They're not, like, the best deck in the game. But as a budget deck, steer on the right course. So I think they're definitely a good option. Fire Kings. Now, if we're talking about full power Fire Kings, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't even be on the list. However, we're talking about pure Fire Kings. So, like, you know, three structured decks plus a few extra stuff or fire king tri brigade which is a pretty like good decent uh budget variant of fire kings if we're talking about stuff like that i'd say maybe about here or maybe like here yeah i definitely put it above stun fire kings are really great because of their consistency and also the fact that they have a lot of built-in negation and a lot of built-in interruption they have so many cars that are able to just destroy each other and they get effects when they're destroyed as well board wipers apart from Nibiru and Evenly Match don't really affect this deck. If you Raigeki, Darkhold, or use any sort of uh, destruction removal on Fire Kings, they don't care. They can play through it. In fact, in some circumstances, it might even help them. Not only that, they also have uh, their normal summonable monsters are already interruption. They have a uh, monster negate and they also have a spell that's trap negate. And also their boss monster is really, really easy to bring out too. I definitely think we're going to be seeing a lot of Fire King in the future. Of course, because Snake Eyes Fire King is going to be absolutely crazy, like top tier sort of stuff. Cyber Dragons, best deck in the game. Okay, let's see. I'd say maybe about here. I'd put it lower than Black Wings, to be honest with you, okay. just because uh, Black Wings can kind of uh, build up boards and break them. Cyber Dragons solely rely on breaking them. That's true. Uh, Cyber Dragons are very, very good. Probably one of my favorite decks. However, just in this format, I don't know if they're going to hold up very well. I think the format's really uh, going heavy on like big combo decks, such as just a Snake Eyes, Fire King, and the likes of that. And they can be really, really hard to play through, especially with a deck like Cyber Dragons. I think the best thing Cyber Dragon can do is if they have Clockwork Knight activated, turn every monster on the field to machine, and then use Cyber Dragon to contact fuse. But seeing how uh, Clockwork Knight can't be searched off a of thrust, and it's like a really, really hard uh, card to get into your hand or even to pop off if your opponent doesn't interrupt it, I don't necessarily think Cyber Dragons are going to be seeing much play this format. Still love the deck, and I would love to see it do well, but uh, I don't know. Trap Tricks, hate to say it, but it's a decent deck. Uh, and very budget friendly. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably the most budget friendly on this list. And just because of that, I think it belongs about here. Yeah. Because it will take you pretty far on a budget, but it won't take you as far as some of these other decks if you're willing to put in like a little bit extra money. So if you buy three structure decks, you pretty much have every Trap Trick card you need. 
All you need is something like Parallel Exceed, some good staples, maybe some extra deck stuff, and that's about it. But you pretty much don't have to buy any Trap Trick stuff, which is very cool. It's nice that you can just like pick up, you know, three structured decks uh, and then call it a day, pretty much. So I think it's a, a definitely like a good budget option. Definitely belongs to be high up there. It does have a ceiling that you will hit fairly soon. So just keep that in mind, but you know, it's, it's definitely, you can take wins. It's not, not a bad deck at all. The king of uh, budget decks, uh, probably about here, uh, is Flanderese. I put it at the top, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, that's, that's very fair. Flanderese are just insane. Because they rely on normal summons, they can use so many cards that restrict you from special summoning because they just normal summon. So they can activate cards like Pot of Duality. Uh, they don't rely on your extra either. So basically all the pots are just like free for them to use. They have access to stuff like Shifter. They can use like really good normal summonable floodgates. So they used to be able to barrier statue, but now they can uh, fossil dine people because you can just normal summon it because this deck revolves around normal summoning. Even cards like Harpy's Featherstorm just destroy decks. It's actually insane. And this deck is absolutely dirt cheap. It's insane how cheap this deck is for how good it is. And did I mention it can run Shifter? Because it can run Shifter. It's, it's an insane deck. It's actually kind of crazy. I definitely think this is the best budget deck that you're going to get this format. It's, it's really crippling to a lot of other uh, decks, the floodgates it can set up, and also the fact that it's just a really, really good consistent deck as well. As Sean mentioned, you can pretty much run any pot card you want. Yeah, I definitely think if you want to be uh, winning games on a budget this format, pick up Flunderies. Super Heavy Samurai. There was a list recently that was a Super Heavy Samurai Runic, and it did pretty well. However, it's Super Heavy Samurai. Like, it got hit so bad. And if you really want to, like, go hard into Super Heavy Samurai, you're going to be spending a lot of money. Obviously, incorporating the Runic engine helps because it's a bit cheaper than going full Super Heavy Samurai. But even then, you're only going to go so far. I will say probably better than uh, Madolche, just because it has seen more results. But um, it is tough to justify, especially since it's been hit so hard. If you really want to go full power with Super Heavy Samurai, you're going to have to invest a bit more. It's okay. If you like Super Heavy Samurai and you like Runic, give it a go. Next up, Witchcrafters. Unfortunately, the deck isn't going to like... It's, it's budget, definitely. You can just play this deck as a fun deck. But it's not going to like do anything crazy. Probably Branded uh, Witchcrafters is your best bet because Cartesia works very well with the deck. But it's just, it struggles. It's... It's not like the best deck, even including it on this list is like, I wouldn't call it meta, you know, but it's it's budget. So I think it does belong here. I think if you're playing Witchcrafter uh, to a meta extent, you'd want to be playing a bunch of expensive cards. You can throw in a branded engine, which is cheap enough to try and help improve it as well. However, I think the main uh, main way you kind of win with Witchcrafters is with, like some expensive cards. Like you throw in like a Dragoon engine and stuff like that is what really makes the deck kind of like competitive in a way but i don't necessarily think witchcrafters hold up well as a as a good deck maybe it's a little bit better than madalshe i think it's probably even cheaper than madalshe just because the cards are still newer than madalshe in the sense that they're a lot easier to get that that's probably one thing that's going for it but i don't necessarily think it's going to be very strong crystal based i think crystal beasts are really good they just have so many like weird gimmicks that just make them really hard to play against uh, the new support and structure deck, absolutely insane. Kind of similar to the Trap Trick structure deck where you don't really have to buy much more uh, on top of the tree structure decks for Crystal Beast to make them playable. Buy tree structure decks, it even gives you a bunch of good staples. Buy a few more staples and hand traps and stuff like that and buy some extra deck stuff and you're pretty much good to go. Another deck that can run Shifter, any deck that can run Shifter and is a budget deck is like pretty good because Shifter can just win games on its own. Has some really powerful like traps so you can play it combo or control. Conclave control is probably your best way of building it. It's cheap, it's strong, it's crystal based. Earth Machine, let's go! I love Earth Machine. <laughs> Earth Machine is one of my favorite decks. It's very budget. All these cards are like basically pennies. Uh, some cards are going up in price so like Ballistas are going up a bit. Vernisilves obviously they're not too expensive at all but like they could go up. Uh, if you want to play Zeus it is like cheaper than it's ever been but that stuff will go up. But it's a good budget deck because it's just Earth Machines, it's just very like simple to play. It's just a, a very good deck, you know, consistent, very strong. Earth Machine best deck, let's go, what can I say? But obviously, even full power Earth Machine does struggle to, you know, get tops. So I think it belongs about here. Next up, Red Dragon Archfiend, um, I'd say about here. Because Red Dragon Archfiend as a deck on its own, it's okay. With the tree structure decks, it's 
it's possible, but if you add a few bestials, not even too many, if you add some bestials to this deck and some good uh, synchros, you're in for like a really strong deck. So if you add like Tree Lubellion and then some of like the cheaper bestials, you're in for a good time. You might not be able to get something like a disc pattern, maybe one copy of this pattern could uh, be enough. But yeah, it does like kind of total line. If you're willing to invest a bit in this deck, it goes up really high. But uh, if you're going to invest a little bit, maybe a few bestials, uh, some hand traps and uh, some extra deck stuff, you're in for a good deck because this is a really good synchro deck. I'd probably put it just one below Fire King, just in the sense that I think Red Jarg and Irish Fiend is really, really good. However, it does need a bit more investment than Fire King does in order to make it a full, comprehensible deck. It's still a really, really great deck, don't get me wrong. I think it's really, really good. Uh, but just adding the Bistules and the generic expensive Synchros now could be a bit, uh, bit pricey and a bit stepping things up. We have Salamangrates. Um, they're not great. So as a deck, you know, Salamangrates are pretty good. One of the only fire decks in the game that doesn't need the Snake Eye engine or Bonfire, so that puts it up. However, there are some cards in this deck that are pretty pricey. The New Link 4, about 30 euro per copy, and you'd want to be playing two because you'd want to like link someone using itself. So at least two copies, and then you need like at least a one of of one of the new smaller ones that's about a tenner. On top of a whole Salamine Grey package. It's difficult to justify. However, it's not as expensive as a lot of decks, and as a fire deck, it does have its benefits because with people playing fire cards, uh, you can really easily go into cards like Hita and steal your opponent's fire monsters and you know link climb from there. And also, this deck will be using Promethean Princess in the future, so it is a bit like hard to justify playing this deck as a budget player. Now, if you like Salads and if you already have a Salamine Great core, you can definitely just add to this and like have a pretty good Salamine Great deck. But as someone who's just coming into Salamine Greats, I would not recommend this as a budget deck. I do think it's a bit better than Labyrinth though, to be fair, because well, yeah, like, uh, Labyrinth, they have a lot of main deck uh, engine that is very expensive, whereas Salad's uh, main deck engine isn't too expensive. So yeah, just put up one, that's fine. Finally, Bling Bling Boy, Eldritch himself. Um, it's like pretty good. I'd say it's a superior trap deck to uh, Trap Tricks, definitely. Everything's pretty cheap, like just buy three Eldritch and you're pretty much good to go. The extra deck stuff is very cheap because there's like good rank tens and stuff like that. It's not bad, not bad at all. Like Eldritch has never been bad. It's always just been worse than the competition, but it's never been bad. And like kind of trap control decks are always strong in the right hands. And this is very cheap. So I definitely think this is a not a bad option to go with. So that's it for the tier list. Uh, overall, I think this is pretty good. I think we have a fair representation between like stuff that's expensive versus stuff that's good. I think like the stuff in top tier is the best you can get because it is cheap and it is good. And as you go down, you know, you have to spend a bit more money and they're a bit worse. But I think at least a second, I think the top two tiers are like genuinely very good. You know, I feel like you could top with every uh, deck in the top two tiers, even a few in like the bottom few tiers. But yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. If you have any ideas of budget decks, let people know because it's great to be able to play new decks without spending an arm and a leg. So let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Give us suggestions for tier lists you want to see in the future. And yeah, stay tuned for more.